All right. Well, good morning, everybody. It's great to have such a wonderful turnout at 10 a.m. <laughs> on a Wednesday, um, but we're really happy to have you here. Um, my name is Rebecca Murphy. I'm the Coastal Program Manager for Northern Virginia Regional Commission, or NVRC, and I'm joined by Jill Caniff, who's our Senior Regional Demographer and GIS Analyst, as well as Debbie Spiliotopoulos, who is our Solid Waste Program Planner. So, Thank you again for attending this webinar to learn about NVRC's corridor analysis project and new dashboard for the Potomac Heritage National Scenic Trail, um, also known as the PHNST and the trail, as we'll refer to it in this webinar. So before we get started, um, we would just like to say um, that this project really would not have been made possible without the support of the National Park Service all of our wonderful management stakeholders and so many other partners that we see on this call right now. Um, so thank you so much for everybody who is involved in this process. Um, and we're really excited to share the results of our honestly very collaborative work. We couldn't have done it without you. So going ahead and getting started. Bill, let me. There we go. Um, so we just want to provide um, an agenda of what we'll be discussing today. Um, first, we're going to provide an overview of the Potomac Heritage National Scenic Trail and our goals for this corridor analysis project. Jill will then share um, the project's methodology and data collection process and results. And following this, we're going to provide a tutorial of how to use our brand new online dashboard and its different interactive maps. And then we're going to finish up with some outcomes and next steps. We will have about 30 minutes for questions and answers. So um, in the meantime, we're going to hold off until the very end. So please put any questions that you have into the chat. And if there is anything urgent, um, Debbie will be our moderator on the chat box. Um, so feel free to message over there. Um, you guys all have your cameras off at the moment, but we ask that you please keep them off to save some bandwidth. And with that, we'll go ahead. So first, we just want to share some general information about the Potomac Heritage National Scenic Trail. Um, we know that most of you are very familiar with the PHNST at this point, but in case we have um, some new folks on the call, um, again, we refer to this as the PHNST, the Heritage Trail, or just the trail in this presentation. So the Peach NST is a 900 mile congressionally designated trail network that runs from the mouth of the Potomac River in Virginia and Maryland to the Allegheny Highlands in Western Pennsylvania. Oh, oh goodness, there we go. Um, in Northern Virginia, um, the trail embrace, embraces portions of Arlington, Loudoun, Fairfax and Prince William counties. Um, the city of Alexandria, the towns of Dumfries, Leesburg, and Occoquan. So it covers a really broad stretch of our region. Um, and as a note, certain portions of the trail are also incorporated into other regional trail networks, including the Mount Vernon Trail and the Washington and Old Dominion or W and OD Trail. Um, in Northern Virginia and in other sections of the PHNST, the trail is made up as a braided network in which there's a primary trail path um, as well as several branch trails that serve as alternate loops to connect to scenic areas, parks, and attractions that we're going to highlight today. Um, the trail is meant for walking, biking, and equestrian uses, um, again, which we'll highlight on our maps. And they also serve a variety of recreational purposes to really enjoy and explore the region. Um, and this includes a number of parks, um, historic and cultural sites, and other points of interest. So overall, the PHNST is managed at the national level by the National Park Service. But NVRC coordinates the Northern Virginia section um, through an ongoing cooperative agreement with NPS. So in this role, we work with over 18 different management stakeholders at the local, state, federal, and also nonprofit levels. Um, and with these different stakeholders, our overall goals are to advance connectivity, safety, and accessibility to the trail for the region. 
And so tied with this, we want to more specifically highlight what some of these goals are. Um, so first is to make a complete regional trail network. As we'll describe today, um, we have a number of gaps within the PHNST that we want to close for complete connectivity. Um, and connected with this is making a complete national scenic and heritage trail system. Next, we want to make the PHNST trail more welcoming to all users. We want to increase inclusivity. We want to make the trail comforting, comfortable for all trail users. We also want to increase accessibility in general. Number four, we want to ensure broad input from all stakeholders regarding future infrastructure and amenity investments for the corridor. And with this, we also want to encourage trail use for underserved communities. Um, and then lastly, we want to improve pedestrian and bicycle safety along the trail um, and from and to nearby communities. So these are a number of goals, but one thing that I we do want to note um, is that a lot of these goals represent a product from NBRC's 2022 Health, Social Equity, and Economic Impact Study. Um, and overall, this study aimed to assess the public health and community-related impacts associated with use of the Heritage Trail. Um, and the larger vision and goal with this was to be able to provide recommendations and really next step actions that we see today with the corridor analysis um, to really justify the investment in the uh, Potomac Heritage National Scenic Trail. So again, the study was released in January 2022, and information will be found um, on our dashboard, which I'll highlight later. And then really quickly, just to highlight why is this so significant? Why are we collecting all this information and data to not only increase connectivity, but also increase accessibility and inclusivity and safety? The results of this study were pretty incredible. So we found that um, with the current benefits of the trail, um, there's over $400 million in health benefits, over $86 million in direct economic impacts, um, but it also showed what a complete connected trail would look like. So this would be an additional over $100 million in health benefits and additional impacts on the economy, social equity, and other components to really what we want to see as a thriving region. So in turn, this study was really beneficial, beneficial to not only direct our e efforts for the corridor analysis, um, but we hope that this study, as well as the corridor analysis, um, can be beneficial to help advocate for future funding, um, as well as general trail completion. And again, additional information and this full report are um, viewable on the dashboard. So with this, what are our specific goals for the corridor analysis? So we've actually um, completed this two, two times already. So typically our goal has been to complete this every five years or so. Um, obviously, uh, the pandemic threw a bit of a wrench into this. So we have it now completed in 2022. So in our previous versions, um, we had a more broad focus. We looked at existing and planned routes, different funding opportunities um, and projects to complete trail gaps and general timing for completion. Um, and really we wanted to expand this out based off of, um, again, the 2022 study, um, but we also have so much more data available now um, and so many more ways to share this information. So our 2022 version of the corridor analysis um, not only includes a lot of new data that Jill will go over, um, but it also includes um, our brand new dashboard to share this data in a really accessible format, um, but also really create a hub of information to promote the trail to the public. Um, if you are interested in looking at the 2011 and 2015 versions, they are in our archives on the website. And so what do our products for the corridor analysis look like? Um, in general, we have two primary products. 
So first is a nice long 100 page written report um, that we have just published today and second is the online dashboard. So we're going to go into the dashboard a little bit later after Jill goes through the methodology and the data collection aspects of the analysis, but just briefly to highlight the actual written report. Um, we really wanted to have one space to be able to share all components and all documentation for the corridor analysis project. Um, so this includes facts like our different trail characteristics, visitation and information, um, and other trail features and actual descriptions in one space for all of these different attributes. It also provides some additional background information on national and regional trail status, some background about the PHNST, cultural and historic information, um, but it also serves as a way to easily access uh, a variety of different tables that we produced. Um, and this includes our different outreach events, trail gaps, parks and amenities, and other attributes. And then with this, we also provide a description of top priorities and needs from the analysis. Um, and one thing to highlight in particular with this written report is that there is an appendix item with different funding resources. So we wanted to be able to provide some next step actions to come from this corridor analysis as well. Um, one thing to note with the re written report and really the caveat is that um, the corridor analysis is meant to be a living document. Um, However, the written report is stagnant as of March 2023. However, our dashboard will be regularly updated with new data and other information. So again, our, our expectation is to have a written report like this continuing every five years or so. Um, however, again, our dashboard will be updated more regularly than that. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Jill to discuss our methodology for the corridor analysis, um, as well as our data collection processes, and then we'll later highlight um, the dashboard. So Jill, go ahead. Hello, everyone. I am Jill Kanuff, and I manage the Potomac Heritage Trails um, data as well as the mapping efforts. So any questions you have on data and the mapping, feel free to always reach out to me. And dur during the questions and answers, certainly you may feel free to ask us questions about the data and mapping as well. So how did we collect all this data as well as what was the methodology behind it for this corridor analysis? First of all, with the management stakeholders of which there are um, over 20 in our region, they were, they were very, helpful in providing the necessary data that we needed. And many of them are on the call today. So thank you all for um, all the contributions you made to this corridor analysis for those of you who are management stakeholders. We couldn't have done it without you. So again, uh, the numerous data pieces that are new to this 22 um, analysis um, came from the management stakeholders. So they verified all the information that was in the report. And in addition, we got acquired data from existing public data resources, such as county GIS layers that are publicly available. We also used comprehensive plans from each of the counties went through the capital improvement programs and various studies that existed on the trail, such as the Mount Vernon Corridor Study and many other data sources. So all these data sources that were compiled were then um, verified by all the management stakeholders to ensure that the data was correct. And any time that the, that the management stakeholders had local knowledge that differed from any of the GIS data, or any of the um, comprehensive plans that are out there, the stakeholders information overrode um, all the other resources that were provided. So again, most important were the stakeholders involvement in this entire process. We did have some places where the comprehensive plans did differ from what the stakeholders convey 
is the appropriate alignment of the Potomac Heritage Trail, which will detail where those differences um, lie, particularly for Prince William County, there were differences there. So again, the stakeholders uh, manage the Potomac Heritage Trail and they have the most extensive knowledge of where the trail is going in their jurisdiction, as well as um, the current status of the trail in their jurisdiction and all the efforts for getting it completed. We also did field visits and met with the management stakeholders one-on-one. -on -one. And again, they validated the data. Next, please. So with the management stakeholders, we assessed all the trail gaps in the region. The trail gaps are the main focus, at least in the past, for how we have gone about managing the Potomac Heritage Trail for the region and NPS. And we did the trail gap assessment um, once again, just as we did back in 2011 and 2015. The management stakeholders assessed the existing and planned routes we had on file and modified those and we incorporated their modifications into our maps. And the information that is included in the trail gaps um, information on our report, as well as the website dashboard, includes um, the gap funding sources, the timing for completion, and the execution steps, at, at least as to as much as is available regarding those aspects. Um, today. Next. And for the newly collected information and updated data that we keep mentioning that we collected and that was um, a very extensive analysis during this process were the following information pieces that we did not ever have before that we now have and will showcase to you in our dashboard. I will say that there are only two pieces actually that we um, did have before, whereas everything else is new. The public transit we had before in our dashboards and the planning status, as I mentioned, we've always done that in the past, but this time around, we really wanted to focus on the users and promoting the trail and um, getting the information out there to the users and management so everybody knew what the status and characteristics of the trail were. So we are heavily at, um, promoting the visitor information through this new resource that we have built. And that visitor information includes points of interest such as your historic sites along the trail, your scenic views, um, museums and visitor information sites along the trail to really get people using the trail and to promote the tourism aspect of the trail. We also collected where the walking and hiking portions of the trail are, where the biking segments of the trail are, because we get a lot of questions from users telling us they don't know where they can go, go biking and they don't know much about the trail, so they are hesitant to use it because they did not have this thorough information about places to bike, places to walk, and the equestrian because uh, the Potomac Heritage Trail, the surface types um, and characteristics are very vast throughout the entire region. So that's why it was confusing to a lot of folks as to where they could do their activities. So this dashboard is meant to alleviate those questions and help, help clarify things for people. We also have water access information and trailhead parking for the visitor information. In regards to trail characteristics, we now have surface type information, trail width, condition and maintenance of the trails, as well as information on the point of contact and the management stakeholder for every section of the trail. So if people have issues with a specific section of the trail or concerns or say there's like a tree down, they'll now know who the point of contact is to go to for that particular section. So we will now turn it over to um, Rebecca to 
showcase the dashboard. She will go through the high level information of the dashboard and then she'll turn it back to me where I will show you all this mapping data. Great, thank you, Jill. Um, so again, this dashboard is really meant to serve as a hub for all of this data and other resources we have for the trail. So all those different components that Jill described are now stored in here. And as a note, traditionally, other information has been on NBRC's website. Um, however, now we encourage you to go directly to the dashboard for this information. So I'm going to go ahead. Let's hope it works. Lovely. All right. So here we are um, on the dashboard. I'm just going to go through some different components of it. It's not um, showing up, Rebecca. Excuse me, oh, it's not. Or Rebecca, your, pre your presentation was on the screen. Okay, well, let's try again here. Better? Yes. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so again, um, I'm going to take you high level over different components of the dashboard. Um, and then Jill's going to walk you through some of the different maps that we have included in here as well. So as you can see here, we're on the dashboard's main page. Um, pretty simple, but we have some different components to help you access um, various features. But again, the, the highlight up here are these um, four different um, toggles. So first is information about the Heritage Trail, it provides a background on the trail, um, as well as NBRC's roles and responsibilities in trail management, and I'll go through those briefly. Next, we have plan your visit, and this is really where you're going to access those different maps that Jill will describe. Next, we also have a maps page where you'll we'll show you downloadable and interactive maps. And lastly, some different resources. So some things that we want to highlight within each of these. First, when we go to about the Heritage Trail. On this page, you'll find some basic background information about the trail as well as the general trail map. And it'll also give you access to the National Park Services website for some additional information on the cultural history and natural history of the trail. Again, here we also want to highlight, um, again, that 2022 study um, because it really has been a guiding focus for all of our work. Next, we have NVRC's roles and responsibilities, just very briefly. And here's where you can find our contact information, as well as to subscribe to NVRC's e-news releases. And then lastly, for about the Heritage Trail, one thing that we do want to highlight is here you can visit um, or view our Memorandum of Understanding um, that was signed in 2019. But we also wanted to provide the space to have contact information for all these different management stakeholders. So um, if you're interested in learning more about the work that they do, um, finding additional contact information, you can click on each of these buttons and it'll take you to their web page, either their general website or it'll go more specifically to the department that is responsible for maintaining or managing their portion of the Heritage Trail. We also just wanted to highlight a few of the different partners that we have that have been really instrumental um, in our collaboration for the Heritage Trail. So you can click on these links as well to go to their web pages. But again, we want to highlight the work that the management stakeholders have completed. So we encourage you to explore some of their different web pages as well and their additional regional trail work. So the next step is to plan your visit. And again, we really wanted to be able to provide the space for um, new and returning trail users um, to easily find information for um, their trail visit. So here you can see a few different components, um, including more specific visitor information, trail characteristics, and outreach and events. Jill will be going into these different visitor features. 
Um, and this includes, again, points that she mentioned, like trail access, um, points of interest, park amenities, as well as water access sites. If you go onto this link, it'll actually take you to the National Park Service webpage for ongoing alerts and conditions. You'll also find information for trail characteristics, and this will take you to an additional map um, that Jill will describe, but this includes um, more general information for the actual attributes of the trail. So this includes things like the trail gap, the maintenance status, and then physical characteristics like um, trail width, um, trail type, et cetera. And then lastly, over the course of our corridor analysis project or process, um, in our one-on-one -on -one meetings with all the different management stakeholders, we requested that they provide us with different outreach um, events. And so we actually have them here. So um, if trail users are interested in finding an event um, along the trail, they can look by um, the general time of year. You can also find it by um, the location, um, and then you can actually go onto their individual web pages for information. So as new events arise, we do encourage management stakeholders to email us um, with net any new events um, that are taking place that they might want to highlight on here as well. And then next, um, Jill took such an amazing approach to having different types of maps. So on one hand, we have interactive maps that she is going to go through. However, we also have two types of downloadable maps as well. So we know that people still like to print out maps when they go out on the trail. So you have two options. You first have an eight and a half by 11 maps, and this can be broken out in between north, central, and south locations as you can see here. And if you do view our written report, um, this is how they're viewable as well. So this provides some close information for those different um, sections of the trail, or you can view it as a 36 by 36 map. Um, so we encourage you to view it as a 36 by 36 map to get um, more easily viewable information um, over the web as well, as you can see here. And so these are provided for all of the different attributes that Jill described. And then lastly, just some other resources to highlight. Um, we have our studies and reports, a link again to the downloadable maps, um, and then media. So really quickly, just to highlight the different studies and reports, these were originally stored on NVRC's webpage, but now again, this serves as a hub to view these different components. So if you are interested in reading the full corridor analysis, analysis report, this is now um, included on our dashboard here to view. And then lastly, just highlighting some of the media that we have. If you are interested in viewing any of our past webinars, they're included on this media page. Um, and following this webinar, um, the recording as well as the slides will be included um, on the dashboard here. And then lastly, we completed a ViewShed inventory several years ago. So if you are interested in finding images for the Heritage Trail, um, you can view that inventory, but we also wanted to share um, the National Park Services link as well, since they have some other great photos. So again, just wanted to provide a high level overview of the dashboard. We encourage you to also um, explore it on your own. Um, and you can see it has its own website here at potomacheritagenova.com. So um, the link is live. So if you type that into your browser right now, it should appear. Um, and so now I'm going to stop sharing and pass it over to Jill to go ahead and go through the different maps. Okay. Um, 
Do you see the visitor information on the website? Yep. Okay, great. So the first thing we'll do is look at the find visitor information. So all the visitor information that we have is in, in a map format. So the first thing we have here is the points of interest. And then the next is the walking and hiking, where you can do that along the trail. And then where are the biking components of the trail? We also have the equestrian, the water access, and the public transit. So each of these are interactive maps by themselves. So we'll first start with the points of interest, which you can do by clicking on either any of these, or if you do the get started, it goes immediately to number one. Um, so we'll start with the points of interest. So when you load the map, you will see the legend that indicates um, the points of interest in this case that are highlighted on the map. And for every map, you can zoom in closer to, to see exactly where in the region uh, that point of interest is located. So you can zoom way in to get the street level views um, to see where, where that is located. And so what you also have here on the map is the Potomac Heritage Trail, our current alignment, as well as the plan sections shown. And then you also have the parks. As you zoom in and zoom out, uh, the parks will be there when you zoom in for information, because parks are very valuable when it comes to amenities for trail users. So a lot of the parks will have your water, your concessions, your restrooms, and all that. So we have mapped the parks and included in each of the parks information, the amenities that are available, as well as links to the actual parks websites. So we'll go into that shortly. So that is what the legend is telling you. And the legend is found on this left-hand side. Um, if you wanna go back between different parts of, of the mapping dashboard. The next part of the mapping dashboard is the base map. So if you wanted something else, you have the option of choose, choosing a different um, base layer, but we like the light gray, at least for the default, that makes it very easy to see the trail. But again, you can go back and forth between all these different components. And then the information tab is very helpful um, for, for letting you and all the website users know how to use this website and what the website is showing. So in this case, the points of interest is showing us the historic and cultural sites, the museums, the visitor centers, and the scenic views. All of these are highlighted um, on the map. And we did, the ones that were of most interest and um, greatest opportunities and um, also for tourism, that is the greatest opportunities for tours, tourism in our region and drawing people to our region. Showcasing the points of interest, I think is really the, the biggest um, data piece we can all use uh, to promote our, our trail and the great aspects it has from a historic perspective as well as a scenic perspective and to get people out on the trail. When people know that there are all these different sites they can see, that really boosts their interest in a, in a place. So that's what we're trying to do here is really boost the tourism interest of, in this trail, as well as um, showing that how valuable it would be to complete the trails um, so that we have a complete connection so people can get to all of these sites along the in the region along the trail. We one other thing to note about the points that we selected, all the points that we selected are either directly on the trail or are accessible via connecting trails. So that's important to note that if it's not on a connecting trail, but it's near the trail, we would not have included it because it's not easily accessible. So another component of, besides the legend, the base maps and the information, the key thing is the information that's associated with each of the points of interest. And this is the same way you'll navigate all of the um, maps that are shown in this dashboard is by zooming in 
using either your, um, your mouse scroll bar or you can use the plus and minus and just zoom in. And when you have zoomed in on a site, you can then click it for more information. So more information will come up as to what is that point of interest along the trail. And this one in this case is the Arlington House Robert E. Lee Memorial. And it's a historic site and you get the descriptions. And then when you click on more information, it will take you directly to that point of interest website for, for more information. So we've got numerous um, sites along the trail, such as the scenic points, like in this case is Kendall Point. And again, more information. So there's numerous points of interest along the trail, um, which is what we're highlighting in, in this one. And one other thing to point out is that um, if say you're out in the field um, or on, um, on the trail and you wanna know where you are, and if you're close to any of these, we've got the find my location aspect in this map. We also have the find the address. So you can put in any address of interest and it'll bring you to, to it. So you can zoom in on that area to see if there's anything of interest to you in that general area. So next we'll talk about the walking and hiking. Okay, so in, in this map for the region, this highlights um, the walking components as well as the activity level is, real, is what the color coding symbolizes in this map. So you've got easy, moderate, difficult, and then the yellow is areas that are biking only, of which there are only two areas in the region where the trail is biking only, and, and for safety reasons, walking is not encouraged. So for the most part, the entire trail network in the region is walking, except for two small areas, which would be this roadside area that is unsafe, according to Prince William County's uh, stakeholders. It's not, in, it's not intended for walking because of the safety. And then Prince William Forest Park has this scenic drive that bikers use, but it's not intended for walking. So those are the only two places in the region where the trail is not for walking. And then in terms of uh, the activity levels, in the report, as well as here on the website, which if I zoom in, um, we've got our definition. So easy is flat terrain without obstacles. Moderate is anything that's flat terrain with obstacles or are a moderately sloped topography. And then difficult is anything that's steep slope or terrain with major obstacles that require much caution when navigating. So again, this information is to guide the trail users as they are using the trail. Next is the biking. Now biking is more limited in our region. It is very limited in the Northern half of our region from the Arlington Key Bridge on northward. Um, so what this map is showing is the color codes for the different biking comfort levels, as well as where there is no biking allowed. So the dark brown shows you that there's very limited biking ability um, availability north of um, the Arlington Key Bridge. So most of that area is equestrian or walking. It's really, the biking is really on the um, central and south part of our region, where right now the biking is pretty much, you'll have, you have a full biking path opportunity to go from the Key Bridge all the way down through Alexandria and Mount Vernon all the way, except for the small um, plan section on Mount Vernon Road that is not complete yet, but that is gonna be completed this spring. It's almost finished. And once that is completed, you will have a full biking route all the way from Arlington, all the way on the Potomac Heritage Trail through um, through Lorton and down through um, the Occoquan area. You will be able to get again, all the way from Arlington to Occoquan once this is open in the spring this year, which is really, really a wonderful 
um, addition to our to our community because that's what we want is a complete network. So we can really encourage people to get out on their bikes and walk and use the trail as well as promote tourism. So filling those missing gaps is critical. And so when it comes to biking, if you want to understand what these levels are, you can go to the information tab where you will get the bike comfort level definitions. For instance, most comfortable is for beginners and families. So riding a bicycle on a quiet neighborhood street or off-road on a paved path or sidewalk, for instance. Whereas just as an example, the experts are for the experienced, highly confident cyclist where significant caution is needed when cycling. You're riding a bicycle supposedly on a road that is heavily traveled, particularly at peak hours and high speed traffic. So we certainly have some portions of the Potomac Heritage Trail that do go along roadsides where you're, you're on a sidewalk or you're in a bike lane or something. Those are where you really need the caution. So that's how we've designated things for this corridor analysis. Yeah. And all of this information on the comfort level primarily came from each jurisdiction in our region uh, who had already, they had already done bike comfort level assessments for the entire counties. That includes Arlington, Alexandria, and Fairfax, where biking is very heavily um, utilized, as well as Prince William. And they all had done bike comfort levels, and so we extracted their information for the Potomac Heritage Trail. So that's where this information came from and is now available to users. With respect to equestrian, the next thing. Um, Equestrian, as you see, is the orange areas. So there's not many um, orange areas in the Potomac Heritage Trail of our region, but there is some, including uh, along the Mason Neck Corridor, you've got Meadowwood Park, which is this park here. And something I didn't point out right now is the parks and how if you're using the trail and you want to know what amenities there are or what park is this equestrian trail located in, you can click on the dark green and the park information will come up for you, telling you that this is Meadowwood and what type of park is it that it's national and what are the amenities at that park as a user. Like in this case, Meadowwood has restrooms for the users as well as picnic tables. And then additional information for the park for any of the parks um, that are along the corridor, you can go to their actual website by doing the click here. So that information is available. And then besides the Meadowwood and Pohick um, Park down in the Mason Neck area, you've also got equestrian on an 11 mile stretch in the Northern part of the region. This stretch is from, from, from Algonquian Park, which again, as you'll see here, is that's Algonquian. And it goes all the way down to um, the Great Falls area, just to the um, entrance of Great Falls Park that you see here. So that's an 11 mile stretch. And then you also have some small areas in the, sub, in the eastern, southeastern part of Great Falls Park for equestrian for the Potomac Heritage. Next is the water access. So what this map shows you is where the existing water access is for the canoe and kayak launching, as well as the, where the planned ones are. So if you click on um, one of the sites, it'll tell you what, the, what that um, canoe launch site is, where it's located, as well as give you an overview of the description of that place. Um, as well as, again, the more information. And for the planned sites in our area, because we do have a few, there is one, the Arlington Boathouse is this one here that is in the works. And that's near Theodore Roosevelt Island where they're gonna add one because there's a big gap as you see here between the existing one and then the existing one up um, in the, Great Falls River Bend area. 
So that's a large gap that this will fulfill. And then you got several others, a lot along Alexandria and Arlington, and then several down in the Prince William County, Southern Fairfax, Mason Neck area. And then other planned ones include um, ones that, one at Bless Park, which is a part of Loudoun County's current capital improvements program that they are working on um, park improvements for uh, pretty much over the next year. I believe Loudoun County is planning to have all the Blaze Park improvements done over the next year, including this new kayak launch site in Loudoun. And then longer term will be this new launch site along this new section of the Potomac Heritage Trail, which this is an alternate route for the Potomac Heritage Trail rather than going along the river. This is part of the signature trail project of Loudoun County, where a kayak launch site is planned near the new Toll House Park that is uh, planned for the, for the county and region. So those are the two two planned ones in Loudoun, and then again, the planned one down in Arlington. And then public transit and parking is shown on this final map for visitors. And with this one, we are showing um, means for access in the trail using bus, rail service, trail, and then if you're driving, where the parking spots are. And for the parking, we've got the existing and a few planned ones that are in uh, planned down the road. And then we've also got the existing versus planned metro. There's one planned metro spot in the region, and that one is um, in Alexandria, where um, you're going to, it's the Potomac Yard one. So if you click on it, you can get the information on which rail station is that that you would have to access to get to that portion of the trail. So in the future, you'll be able to use the Potomac Yard station, which is 2023 is the is the opening, probably this summer. And then again, all these access sites, including VRE at King Street, are found on this website for the trail users to know how they can get to the trail. And included in them is like information on the fact that in this case, like there's the free shuttle on the King Street trolley. So even though it's over a mile to get to the trail, this one provides trolley free trolley service. And then again, for the parking, you can click on this to, to know what the name of the parking lot is. Some of these names are official names and others are unofficial. But if official names did not exist, we just gave it a general a generic name for the general location where it is existing. And again, if you zoom in, you'll get like the street side information to know exactly where that is for your parking. And if it's planned parking, you'll have information on uh, like when it is uh, planned, what project in the capital improvements program of the county it is a part of and any further details we have on the planned parking for that section. And so information, especially the planned information, we would seek to get from all the stakeholders updated information as it becomes available so that we can consistently keep all this data um, current. So we would really um, look towards the stakeholders on this call and all anyone who couldn't make it on this call to keep us updated so that our region can have accurate information for trail use, as well as for planning purposes. And so that again, highlights the rail stations trailhead, as well as all the bus stops. And I forgot to click on the bus stop. So I'll do that quickly. So for the bus stops, you'll get the name, you'll get the name of the bus stop location. So we're in the code. So both of these can be used when accessing the schedule from the actual uh, bus services website. So in this case, Alexandria Dash is serving is serving the bus line because it has a yes. All these others do not serve it. But once you know which bus line serves that location, you can go to their website, which we have included in the information on this. We have provided the links to all the schedules for each of these service providers. 
So that is the visitor information. And then the other component that we have for the maps is the trail characteristics, which can be accessed under the plan your visit, or you can access it under the maps interactive maps. So if you go to the trail characteristics site, you'll then click on that button that I just did. And in here, we've got the planning status, the surface type, the width, condition maintenance and the point of contact in case there's concerns or any issues, or you wanna know like if we need to update the information, who is our main point of contact for the information we are showing for that section. So I'll go into the planning status last because that's the most time consuming and probably of much interest to many of you on the call is how, how are we doing as a region in completing the gaps? But first I'll go into these surface with condition and maintenance and points of contacts. And Jill, just to give us a time check, it's 10.55. Yes, so I'll go through these three pretty quickly now that everybody's probably got a full understanding of how to use, how to use this. So for the surface type, we have gravel, natural surface, paved. We have a wood boardwalk, and that wood boardwalk, as many of you know, is Neapsco. So if you scroll in, you can see that. We've also got trail type of wood mulch and then multiple surfaces. That would be ones where like the Washington and Old Dominion Trail is a good example where you've got the paved surfaces, but then right beside it, you've got a separate area that's natural surface and gravel in some cases. And so if you wanted to know um, information on, say, besides just the um, surface type, all of these maps, you can click on it and get that um, characteristics data at the beginning here. But then all the other information that we've been speaking about is also in the pop-ups, such as the surface type with um, the usage of the trail for that section. So all of this is in every map that you, you have seen so far. So that's the surface type, the width. That's important when you wanna consider like how, if you're going with your family and you want your kids beside you, then you would want a wide trail. Or if you're commuting and you wanna be sure that it's multi multi-directional, you'd want a wide trail in that case um, to prevent, um, prevent crashes and be on the safe side. So we have divided the trail up into three different characteristics for width, narrow, intermediate, and wide. So it's, for instance, in Loudoun, it's very narrow up in the Northern end and throughout a lot of um, Northern Fairfax County. But then as you get on the Mount Vernon Trail and go south, you've got some intermediate as well as some very wide areas. And for the Mount Vernon Trail, they are in the planning to widen it so that it is 10, so that it is close to 10 feet or more in the future. Because right now it's very narrow is, and that is noted in the report how that's a very narrow section and too narrow for the amount of usage it gets. So in the future, oh, this should be widened for more safe access. And then condition and maintenance. This one is more of a trail maintenance tool so that if, if your stakeholders and counties and jurisdictions want to apply for funding to improve, improve sections of their trail where there might be flooding issues or um, erosion, or in cases like Mount Vern the Mount Vernon Trail where it's fair because it's too narrow, for the amount of usage. This is a great tool for, for being able to um, apply for funding for grants and all to improve your sections of trails as a stakeholder. And then the point of contact is a map that we're showing you here. We've got many stakeholders in our region which we said like over 20 of them in our region, which is what the color coding on the map shows. So for instance, if you click on this section of the trail, you'll see that that is our stakeholder and our point of contact is George Washington Memorial Parkway. So if you go back to that resources list um, that was on the dashboard that Rebecca was showing you, 
where they had we had links to all the stakeholders. You could go there to determine um, uh, who to co contact uh, for for this section. So in this case, George Washington Memorial Parkways would be your point of contact. And say one more example, like down here, this point of contact for this section would be the US Fish and Wildlife Service. So the fact that we have so many land managers in our area makes the case in point of why NBRC is involved in, in this project and partners with NPS, because managing all the um, data and information with all the land managers that there are in this region becomes very complex. So that is NBRC's role is to work with all of them and to compile this information that you have seen. And then lastly, we'll go into the planning status. The planning status information is for the planned portions of the of the trail and what is the timing of completing that portion and the next execution steps, as well as any additional information, like is it is it in the current capital improvements program? So we'll start with like Loudoun County, for instance. Loudoun County, um, we have there's a big gap in the trail that we don't don't have as a region from Leesburg all the way up to the Harper's Ferry area of Loudoun County. Um, where Harper's Ferry National Park is. And there is going to be a feasibility study conducted over the next year with Loudoun County and the National Park Service and NVRC to determine where it will be most feasible to possibly develop a trail um, in this missing section. So for instance, if you click on the gap, you will find the description of that gap, as well as what those next execution steps are. Um, so, for instance, the execution steps for this portion would be to follow the recommendations of Loudoun's Linear Parks and Trail Study that was published in June 2021. And the funding uh, would come from the Linear Parks and Trails Capital Improvement Project that is currently in Loudoun County's CIP. So you'll get that sort of information if you go through each of these gaps to determine um, where they are in developing that area. And let's see, if you want more information, for instance, if you click here, it'll take you to like say the Capital Improvements Program or the LPAT um, document so you can review it further. So in Loudoun County, you've got those, and then you got a gap from Veterans Park here up to White's Ferry, part of which is going to be under development with the Route 15 widening. And then there's another section uh, from Veterans Park over to route, the Route 15 widening that really it, it's uncertain as to how that's gonna happen and when it can happen, but it's something that needs more attention for sure is what we found out from our corridor analysis is that is there was a, um, a lot of um, unknowns with how this is ever gonna happen. So it's important for um, Loudon's policymakers and staff to be aware that this is a need that NPS, NVRC and all of us can work on further. And then you've got, um, just so you know, the difference between the green planned Potomac Heritage Trail and the purple, is that the purple is the potential route, but it's not confirmed. Whereas it's if it's confirmed, that means that um, it is already part of like say the CIP. So for instance, the signature trail here in Loudoun is in their CIP and gonna be built over the next few years. Whereas um, the planned potential route for let's say this segment over here, which is connecting um, like Algonquian Park over to um, over to the Blaze Park area. This is really an unknown as to where the potential route would be, but the status of that can be found on things like this, where this is um, this trail 
is known as Escrigan as the owner. And right now it's Loudoun County Parks that handles it. And if you click on the gap, that's where you really wanna go to, to get the information for that specific one. So you've got to get all the information details on each of the projects in the region. So the biggest gaps, the other big gaps I'd like to mention are over in Fairfax County, you've got the big gap between um, Scotts Run Park and Great Falls Park. And this gap is shown as such because this is how our the current comprehensive plan of, of Fairfax County designates it. And the active Fairfax plan is currently an ongoing process, which will um, make a new plan for all the trails in Fairfax County, including this trail as to where it will actually go. And so right now, Fairfax County, um, the vision for Fairfax County is for it to go along Georgetown Pike. So that's how we have designated it. And then you've got other gaps like this one that we mentioned earlier would be completed. And then Fairfax County, again, the active Fairfax plan will be updating this segment to, to determine where a connection from this Route 1 corridor, Lorton Road corridor of the trail can be connected down to Mason Neck. Because right now there is no, no connection from this part of the trail down to the Mason Neck. So that is a, a big gap. And then in Prince William County, you've got some gaps such as along Gordon Boulevard, which is, this portion is under construction and will soon be completed as is noted under the gap information. Prince William County ultimately would like to see the trail go along the river, along the bay and inlet. Uh, so they are doing a study right now a feasibility study to determine if if this route will be feasible, but that ideally is where they would envision it to go. And then you've got this section that's going to be completed um, in the next year, and then several of these other sections. And then one important last thing to note on the plan is when you don't see a planned route, um, but you see the dots, that means that there is really no um, no proposed route that has been in the works right that is in the works and agreed upon right now by the counties and the and in this case the county and city of Dumfries. So all we have is just the dots to say we need a we need a um, segment built in this area and we need the policymakers to really um, work to identify where is that route going to be feasible. So this is one place in particular, as well as uh, Northwestern Loudoun County that I pointed out earlier as to where we um, have some gaps in the trail network. So that is an overview of our entire um, mapping system that we have just developed. So we'll stop sharing and we will turn it back to Rebecca and then do questions and answers. So let's see. Stop sharing. Okay. Great. Thank you. Go back to here. All right. So really quickly, um, we just also wanted to highlight some top priorities and needs that came from the corridor analysis. And as you can see here, they're kind of in three different buckets. So first, we collected a lot of data, but there is still much to be uh, collected and explored for our region. So um, this includes data gaps such as road user safety areas, um, which include areas like intersections and road crossings that have been deemed unsafe at this time. Um, this also includes components like wayfinding, interpretation, and amenities, where we really need to have some on-the-ground surveying to um, find this information, and I'll discuss that in the next slide as well. Um, another component to this is ADA accessibility, um, as well as major and minor trailheads. So 
again, um, with our time, um, you know, we weren't able to explore everything, but hopefully with future projects and additional funding in the future, we'll be able to uh, collect this data um, and incorporate it into the dashboard in the future. Um, the next bucket of priorities and needs is funding, um, as I'm sure everybody on this call <laughs> is very aware of. So this includes funding for things like trail maintenance, all those different maintenance areas that Jill highlighted, um, new and updated amenities, as well as education and outreach materials. Um, and then also just funding to close those gaps that Jill just highlighted. So um, I know everybody, again, um, is aware of different buckets of funding, um, but they're also highlighted in the written report um, to serve as a next step for some of these. And then lastly, just some other priorities that we have um, that were identified by the management stakeholders include things like increased volunteer support um, for trail maintenance, um, increased water access and promotion. Um, I think sometimes it's easy to consider um, the trail that exists on land when it um, having water access is a critical component to this trail as well. And then lastly is a local transit to trail study. Um, and this would really be a feasibility to understand um, public transit access to the trail and what that could look like. Um, so again, these different components were really highlighted um, within the dashboard and within the mapping components, um, but there's so many ways that we can expand on this in the future. And so what does this look like? Um, again, these priorities and needs have helped give us a direction for future projects and programming. So just in terms of our work for this upcoming year, we will be completing a wayfinding and amenity study, and this will include creating a data collection application where we'll actually have volunteers go out onto the trail and collect information on the wayfinding or blazes and that type of signage, as well as the amenities that exist along the trail. Jill also mentioned that Loudoun feasibility study between NVRC, NPS, Loudoun County, and Leesburg um, to help find a way to close that gap. Um, some other things going on, we'll continue to try to have quarterly management stakeholder meetings to share best practices, any project updates, et cetera. Um, and as everybody's probably aware of, in addition to the Potomac Heritage National Scenic Trail, NVRC has also been working on some general regional trails programming. So this includes working groups um, and other activities such as the Regional Trail Summit that we had um, back in October. And lastly, just some future projects that we're considering. Um, we have requested funding to conduct uh, or complete uh, trail counter program. So in areas of the trail where there is not currently um, any trail counters, we're hoping to purchase some so that we can really track the success um, of our programming um, and all of the management stakeholders work as well as just general trail usage. Um, we're also waiting to hear back from funding regarding um, interpretation enhancement projects. So this would to add new interpretation to the trail. And then also just general marketing and promotion. So with all these programming, how can we work with um, tourism entities, um, other organizations and community groups in the region to really help promote the trail and increase accessibility and inclusivity for the trail network. So um, the corridor analysis is completed, but we have a lot still going um, forward. So we're really excited to, to continue this work and of course, continue to collaborate with all of you on these projects. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing. It looks like we have a little over 15 minutes for some questions and answers. So Debbie, I'm gonna let you go ahead and facilitate that. Well, everybody, uh, thank you for those who commented. It looks like there are not a lot of questions, um, but a lot of kudos uh, to both of you for the efforts. Um, and I think a lot of people are looking forward to digging into this and providing some insights and um, recommendations and, and that sort of thing. Um, 
<clears throat> I guess what we could do is maybe we just have a couple of minutes. Does anybody want to unmute and ask a question or anything? It's crickets. Okay, I guess Kevin, you got your hand up. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, yeah. Kudos. This is incredible. Um, the the one question I I had um, is like, what is the current plan to like maintain the sort of underlying data? Um, I noticed like as you were you know scrolling through all the things like last updated you know December 2022 or February 2023 whatever um, is there a, a process that y'all have like laid out for like how often you're revisiting um, this information um, because I think that's going to be be critical obviously the overall analysis you know every every you know five years that's that's totally fine. Um, but for some of this, I, I imagine like you would want, you know, at least like an annual sort of update to make sure, you know, links are working, projects haven't been completed, whatever. Um, I'll, I'll let Jill answer that. But yes, the intent is that the dashboard can be updated as regularly as we want it to. So as buckets of new data and information comes in, it should be relatively easy for us to add it. But I'll let Jill um, go a little further into that. Yeah, so our plan is to definitely update it at least once a year. So we would rely on the stakeholders um, providing us with the updated information throughout the year. And certainly if they do, we'll update it when they provide it. But certainly if we haven't heard from a stakeholder on any updates, uh, once a year has passed, we will uh, make make contact with them and to collect any of the updated information and input it into the system. But we certainly would rely on the stakeholders for the information and updates. For sure. And then I think we had Jerry and then Charlie wanted to ask a question. Jerry, did you want to go forward? I, I did. I'm sorry. I can't. My computer is not doing well today, but just first wanted to say amazing amount of work. And then actually my question was just the same about updating the information. So um, that uh, sounds like a great way to do it. So, but thanks you guys. Very nicely done. And Charlie. And building on that trend, I think one of the great opportunities is the 250th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence, the semi-quincentennial. And there'll be a lot of tourism related activities that will be put together, not on an annual basis, but on a more rapid basis. So this update process with the tourism community is probably gonna be your stress test for how do we create a, a reliable way for us to maintain up-to-date information. Oh, it got canceled because of rain, so we're rescheduling it, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. That's good. And we do, I think, direct to the, the National Park Service for a lot of the maintenance updates as opposed to having to rely on this. So, right. As well as for the alerts, if an event is canceled, we have the we don't give the specific dates on our website for the events. We just say it's March or it's April and uh, give the link to the actual event website to where we would rely on the event website maintainer to put that alert information out there as we certainly won't have the staff or resources to do that. All we can do is say, this is a regularly occurring event. Things that are not regularly occurring, just so you know, are not in that events list. So what we aimed for is anything that's a regularly occurring event on an annual or monthly basis. And then Jennifer, I think you're, you had something. Yeah, well, obviously um, I'm just blown away and I thank you all for all your work that I think will be helpful for the new trails office um, staff to see what the possibilities are and, and how our recreation and transportation trail um, kind of work together, but I also wanted to um, just, will you all be presenting this at the Land Conservation and Greenways Conference as part of that connectivity, uh, re regional trails connectivity presentation? I don't think it was originally um, mentioned just because it is a panel at this point, um, but I've seen some things in the chat about other presentations as well. So. Um, I know that we'll be presenting on this to the commission. I believe it's next month, but 
um, we would be happy to share this information with other groups as well. I hope you'll at least give a sneak preview. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think we can do that. <laughs> Great. I know it's a lot. It's an, inf you know, a uh, uh, fire hose of information. So we don't want to keep you all longer than you need to be. But um, but please re reach out. And um, I'm I'm totally blown away, just like you all are. Uh, it's just wonderful to have the skills of Jill and Rebecca as a part of our team. So um, <clears throat> uh, I think we'll have this recorded. Please share and uh, and yes, it will be, uh, Eileen just asked, it is gonna be, we're gonna have a recording of this on the website as well as the, um, a PDF of the slides. And um, and I think I put in the chat, it's uh, potomacheritagenova.com. And you can go, you don't even have to go through our website, you can go right directly to that. And that'll get you to all the maps. And we look forward to, I have a couple of little typos and notes from the messages that I'll share with Jill and Rebecca right off the bat. And, um, you know, at a minimum, things will be updated annually on the website and the, so. Yeah, thank you all. And I would also say, please feel free to email us if you do have any additional questions or comments. So thank and you. And I would also just add that we've gotten a, just a few comments on some things um, that may need added or changed. Any Anytime you have additions or changes, we would rely on all the locals who have the local knowledge to provide it to us so we can keep this tool up to date and current for everybody. So thank you. Thank you all. Have a great afternoon. I'm thank you. Recording. Mm -hmm.